Honourable Kelvin Davis. So, Mr. Speaker, when we're talking about openness and trans transparency, uh, the question that the Acting Prime Minister has been asking right now is very relevant. Who's the leaker? Right. Who is the leaker in the National Party? There has been an investigation going on for how long? How long? And it's gone nowhere. We know nothing about the leak. And the leak was all about, uh, Mr. Speaker, the leak was all about A Simon Bridges. Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Uh, Mr Speaker, you granted the debate on the basis that it was a uh, debate about the government or the Prime Minister's decision to terminate the ministerial career of Mecca uh, Faitri. Now, how then does the beginning of the speech by Calvin Davis meet those criteria? Or is it a general debate and therefore a bit of a free-for-all? Sure, sure. It, it is. It is uh, speaking to the point of order, the right yeah. honourable Winston Peters. If you would have followed uh, the speech from the previous speaker, it was seriously a sermon on values, transparency, morality, morality openness, and honesty. Now, surely, when you put those sorts of principles into the mix, someone's entitled to start in their first breath uh, to question whether or not there are examples of that not being held in the House. He hardly got going, and Mr. Brownie objected to it. Surely he could have waited until he got into the substance of his speech. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't have put it better myself. The Honourable Kelvin Davis. Mr. Speaker, I mean, it's interesting the defensiveness. They can right. raise uh, uh, issues around transparency with us, openness, and then what happens as soon as we raise something about their lack of open, openness, their, their lack of transparency, uh, they want to shut things down. But let me tell you about what the Prime Minister did do, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister when she uh, heard that there had been an incident, acted decisively. She acted immediately. Uh, there was an investigation uh, set up, uh, an independent investigation, which took a couple of weeks to do uh, the, the job that it was meant to do. And in that time, Mika Whaitiri wasn't sitting at home on full pay. She was actually going about her business as the Member of Parliament for Ikoroa Rafati, doing what uh, a member of parliament should do in a situation like that is in that like in a situation like this and that is looking after her constituents so there was a report that was produced and within 24 hours the prime minister had made the decision to stand Mecca Whaitiri down. And it wasn't a decision that she made lightly. We know she wrestled with it. We know that she is a fair but firm uh, leader. But in, in the end, she had made her decision and she made it swiftly. Unlike the opposition, who we still don't know who the leaker is. Because, Mr Speaker, the... Of order, the Honourable Jerry Brown. Oh, Madam Speaker, the uh, 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 Speaker has ruled that this is a very wide debate. Uh, but I would point out that when the Honourable Amy Adams was speaking and raised the issue of the uh, sexual assaults at the Labour youth camp earlier this year, uh, the signal was very clearly given that the debate should be narrowed with the sort of concertina type movements of the Speaker's hands at that time. Uh, I do hope that there will be a degree of consistency applied. Uh, to the speech of the struggling Calvin Davis. I, I, do, I, 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 don't, I don't need any help on the point of order. Thank you, thank you um, uh, Honourable Jerry Brownlee. I will take your comments into account as I listen to the uh, continuing debate. I call the Honourable Calvin Davis. There is an issue, that, though, that the uh, facts in the case are disputed. So there is a situation... Oh, I, I apologise to the member for interrupting. Um, there's a very strong convention uh, in the House uh, that speakers are not given advice, especially abusive advice, uh, as they leave the chair. Uh, David Bennett will stand, withdraw and apologise. Thank you. Kevin Davis. Uh, uh, the facts of the case are disputed, and this is where um, this sort of uh, little legal feature of natural justice uh, needs to come into play. It's important that somebody is given the benefit of the doubt and is innocent until proven guilty. But instead, we've already heard from Amy Adams that uh, in her mind there are some facts that are undisputed. She says she hasn't seen the report, and yet she's saying that there, these certain things definitely did happen. Well, 
Mr Speaker. We have to ask if they don't know anything about the report, how is it that she has all of these, uh, all of these facts? There are, uh, Mr Speaker, it is, uh, Madam, Madam Speaker, it's, Madam. it's totally necessary that we allow the, uh, the process to go ahead, that there is an investigation. That investigation has occurred. That investigation uh, came up with, uh, with its findings, of which there are, uh, some of those elements are disputed. There are some elements that are not disputed, and it was on that basis that the Prime Minister uh, made her decision to stand down Mika Whaiteri. I mean, if we talk about, um, we heard Amy Adams talking about uh, how under John Key and Bill English, uh, things would have been acted on decisively and that none of them would be uh, here uh, if, if they had lost the, uh, um, the confidence of the Prime Minister of the day. Well, I've got a two-word question for that. Two-word question is Judith Collins. Why is she still here? We know... Uh, point of point order, of order. Judith Madam Speaker, the member has yet again referred to a matter where I was completely exonerated by the Chisholm inquiry led by retired Justice Chisholm, and that is totally inappropriate for this particular debate. I ask that he withdraw and apologise. Well, the difficulty that I have is that it, I'm, just, I'm just ruling on this point of order, if you don't mind. Well, I, I'm, I don't. I'm going to rule on this point of order. If you, if, would you please sit down? The difficulty that I have, uh, Judith, uh, the Honourable Judith Collins, in ruling on that is that he ha has only mentioned your name. He hasn't actually referred to any indiscretion. So he has actually nothing to withdraw and apologise. However, I'm sure that the member will continue to listen uh, in case... Uh, the Honourable Kelvin Davis goes further. Uh, Ms. <laughs> Ms. Uh, Madam <laughs> Speaker, sorry. Then, then there's also Richard Worth, Madam Speaker. Now, Richard Worth is a name that uh, has, is a footnote in history, and yet we still don't know the reasons behind right. his disappearance from Parliament. We will never know. We ask the questions, we ask the same questions that they're asking, and yet we were never given any reason and we never will. And it's so it's, you know, we just find it extremely disappointing that somebody can stand up on that side, point the finger at us when we know that, that the former national government uh, was, uh, ministers disappeared without a trace and nobody is any, is none the wiser for uh, the reasons that they disappeared. And then uh, the member that spoke raised the uh, issue around Todd Barclay. Now, if, if the national government was so decisive, why did the Todd Barclay debacle linger for months and months and months? He knows uh, and we know that the former leadership of the National Party were slow and they uh, were not the decisive machine that we've been led to believe in this House. But there's any number of former ministers that have, uh, that have had their um, uh, day in the, in the sun, sadly. We, I've already mentioned Richard Worth. It was Phil Heatley. He resigned over financial irregularities with his uh, Crown credit card. Pansy Wong, remember her? She resigned over abuse of tax, taxpayer-funded travel perks. Nick Smith. Let's, let's all, um, uh, you know, Nick Smith is still here. He resigned over abusing his office to help a close friend. Kate Wilkinson, that's another name that uh, was once bandied around these walls but has disappeared into, uh, through the ether of time. Peter Dunn himself, re resignation connected with a leak from the GCSB. Uh, John Banks, he resigned. Uh, Morris Williamson, old Morris. Uh, he resigned after being caught abusing his position to help a wealthy businessman avoiding domestic uh, violence charges. Mr. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, when, when, we, uh, when that party over there is pointing the finger over at us, that means there's three point, uh, fingers pointing back at them. They know that they've got, uh, they've got issues to hide. We also, uh, there were, there were un oh, no, I won't go into that because there's a minister that, um, that uh, Rumours circulated around her treatment of uh, staff in the last uh, parliament, in the last government. Uh, we know that media are aware of those, uh, those issues and those, um, uh, those allegations. That, that, that government, oh, that party over there, they know that we know. 
they need to be really careful about what they're saying about us over here because uh, they're, uh, they've got skeletons in, in their uh, closet as well. There are uh, certainly double standards when it comes to the, the National Party. So as I've said, m uh, Madam uh, Speaker, the Prime Minister, she was decisive. She heard about the allegations around Mecca Whaitiri and within uh, 24 hours she had decided that there needed to be an investigation. That investigation occurred. It took uh, a couple of weeks to, to happen. Uh, we, as soon as she found out uh, and received the report and read the report, within 24 hours she had made that decision uh, to stand the, the, the minister down from her duties. And as I've said, Madam Speaker, it was not something that she, uh, she took lightly. But as I've said, the Prime Minister is compassionate. She is a, a firm but fair leader, and it's fairness that was necessary in this case because you can't just go uh, dumping people based on allegations. It's a matter of having a look at the, at the facts, at, the, at, at what's happening, and then make your decisions from there. So, Madam Speaker, uh, we, this House, uh, as, as we've heard from uh, Amy Adams, she said that uh, people will soon get sick and tired of, of certain things. Let me say, people are getting sick and tired of the National Party barking at every car. They bark at every single issue that's going on. They don't have a focus. They're, they know that this government is very, very popular. They know that... Uh, they know that the work of the, uh, the Minister of Finance is starting to show rewards. We've talked about the, the growth in GDP over the last quarter. It's more than what they expected. Could we focus on the debate, please? Could we focus on the debate, please? Uh, yeah, sure, Mr. Uh, Madam Speaker. They know that this government is doing well. They know that the Prime Minister right now is showing her leadership skills across there in America, representing New Zealand well. She's been a leader on that stage. She's, uh, the, the, the Prime Minister is showing leadership overseas. She's showing leadership domestically. She's uh, a Prime Minister that we're all very proud of, and she's shown her leadership medal. Now, some people think that leadership is all about waving the big stick and, and, and trying to talk tough and be tough, but there's, there are different forms of leadership, and our Prime Minister shows. You can be compassionate, you can be fair, you can be just, but you can still make the hard decisions when you need to, and that is exactly what Jacinda Ardern has done. She's made the hard decisions. She's had to deal with this issue uh, with, um, uh, with former Minister Fai Titi, and, uh, and I was there in the office when she had the discussion. Oh, and sorry, that's, that's another thing that was raised by uh, Amy Adams, talking about the Māori caucus. She talks about the Māori caucus as if she's, uh, as, uh, the Labour Māori caucus, as if she's an authority on Māori issues, as if she actually knows anything about what's happening uh, in the Labour Māori caucus. Let me say our Māori caucus is strong, and one of the things we do is we stick to our tikanga. And one of our tikanga is to stand up and support our people when they need our support. It doesn't mean to say we, we pass judgment, it doesn't mean to say we agree or disagree, but we know in Māori Dim that it's important to stand beside your people. Right. It's important to be there, just to hold them up, just to help. And that's how we were raised, that's a tikanga that we understand and we know and we don't have to justify to any uh, member of parliament from the opposition who has absolutely no idea around tikanga Māori, no idea around kaupapa Māori. She has absolutely no and yet she's standing there in judgment of us. And quite frankly, as Māoris, we're sick of people like herself standing up and judging us for the way we do things. We don't have to justify our tikanga and the way we operate to anybody, least of all Amy Adams. The, the, uh, are oh, arrogant. So now uh, being Māori is being arrogant. Yeah, that's right. that's you know, right. just, just trying to be ourselves and operate in our space and the way we do things according to our customs, to our tikanga, all of a sudden it's arrogant. Well, that shows what the National Party, the way they think about uh, Māori, Jim, that's the way uh, the, the Māoris who live in, in Hamilton, that's how they're treated by their members over there. They don't... I've, they, I've
Point of order, the Honourable David Bennett. Point of order, that uh, member made a reference to Hamilton, and, and um, I never even made the comment that the member was talking about, so I asked him to withdraw and apologise. Well, well, he didn't actually. He you. said he mentioned thank Hamilton you. and pointed at me. Th thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, and I, if I was about to refer the member back to the topic of his speech, but in fairness, he did not refer to the actual member by name. Um, but I would ask the Honourable um, Kelvin Davis to stick to the topic. It has nothing to do with uh, Hamilton and what Maori people who live in Hamilton might think. Well, Madam Speaker, there was a reference to the Labour Maori caucus and, and the way uh, that Amy Adams portrayed um, Actually, it's something. The Honourable Amy. The Honourable Amy, Amy Adams portrayed something that she knows nothing about. And then uh, there, there was a comment made uh, that talking about Māori issues and talking about the way that we as the Māori caucus support our people is arrogant. As soon as we stand up and, and, and uh, start explaining our cultural norm, our cultural perspectives and how we like to do things, how we like to support our people, how we supported Mecca Whaititi in her conversations uh, with the Prime Minister, all of a sudden it's called arrogance. And, and uh, well, there, there's uh, the most Māori person in the, uh, in the National uh, Party uh, caucus now, uh, who I believe was a woodwork teacher, uh, and now he's uh, lecturing us and, and telling us how Māori have to, uh, have to uh, operate. So, as I've said, uh, the National Party again, barking at every car, and there's um, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee, Barking is more barks over there than, your, than at your average Crufts conference, your Crufts dog show. Barking at every car, They're, they have absolutely no idea about uh, uh, the way we operate in the Labour Party and the support that we gave to Mika Whaititi uh, as a Māori Member of Parliament, because our caucus, our Māori caucus, bases the way we act on, on tikanga, and that tikanga that we displayed there was just to go and support her in a time of need, and that's a very Māori way to do things. The, the topic of the conversation, in fact, uh, in terms of us um, uh, talking with the Prime Minister about Mecca's situation, we were basically there to say we are there to support Mecca Whaititi as a person. And there's nothing, nothing dishonourable or nothing to hide around that. We were just there simply to support her as a colleague and as a person in a very, very stressful time. And that's something that we are very, very proud of. And then for them to characterise it as anything else other than us being there to support a colleague is uh, outrageous at, at the very least. But again, it just goes to show how little they know about the Māori things and, uh, and we as Māori shouldn't have to justify um, uh, the way we operate. And as I've said, as I've said, the Prime Minister has been firm, she has been fair, she has been decisive in uh, dealing with our, our colleague, Mecca Whaititi. Uh, she wanted Mecca Whaititi to be able to have her say, which is natural justice. She wanted to see what the independent investigator had to say, uh, and then she made her decision based on the evidence that was put in front of her. There are some things that are contested, there are some things that are not contested. And on the things that were not contested, the Prime Minister made her decision to stand down uh, Mecca Whaititi. And uh, just as, as a final uh, thought, I'd just like to acknowledge, uh, and I'll just uh, quickly spin into Māori here, uh, Madam Speaker. Mihi whānau iati ki te whānau o Mecca Whaititi. Mōhi ana mātou ngā taimaha tanga kei runga i ona pokowhiwhi, ngā pokowhiwhi o te whānau. Ka tuku atu mātou o mātou aroha ki a rātou tēnei taima, uh, taimaha nā reira hurirauna tēnā koutou katoa. I call the Honourable Ron Mark. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Well, I'm going to start by thanking the... the